Well, hey everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I thought I would take a moment and address a couple of things that Flatsoid brought up in his video about me yesterday. Now, while most of his video was nothing but undeserved arrogance and is a prime example of why he's a leading contender for the Top Left Award this year, I thought I would address a couple of things. First of all, I misspoke twice. I had one time in the beginning of the video that I flipped a couple of letters, so I said WSG instead of WGS84. I think everybody was very well aware of what I was talking about. Now, towards the end of the video, I was obviously discussing his claim that somehow heating an object changed its weight. Specifically, I was addressing the contention that somehow making an object warmer uh, somehow changed its mass because gravity, of course, wouldn't be affected by the temperature of the object. And weight is mass times gravity. And Flatsoid and his jerkle got a nice laugh out of that. I just thought I would mention something. I have struggled with dyslexia since I was a child. I do occasionally reverse things. It's probably one of the reasons that I don't do a lot of live streams because when I record things in the studio, I catch those reversals and correct them, but sometimes they get out on live streams. Sorry about that, but it doesn't change the validity of what I was talking about, and I think everybody is very well aware of what I was discussing. The second thing that I wanted to address is uh, Flatsoid had been challenged by both myself and by Critical Think to present evidence that simply heating an object would make it change mass. And he brought up this experiment that he did from three years ago. Now, the experiment itself is a relatively nice concept. His execution of it was a little clumsy, but let's go ahead and address it. Now, basically what he did was he took a sealed plastic bottle, looks like about a one liter bottle, but he went ahead and he put this on his paint measuring scale in his shop. And then what he wanted to do was have a look at the density of this object as he heated it up with a hot air gun. This was back when the flat earth was trying to make the case of relative density disequilibrium as a possible substitute for gravity. So let's go ahead and have a look and see what he did. Now I would like to make a couple of notes about this experiment. First of all, a safety consideration. When you seal a plastic bottle and then heat it up, you raise the pressure inside the bottle because the air inside the bottle will expand as it heats up. As a result, there is a bursting risk. So make sure that you wear eye protection and ideally put it in some sort of a box to contain any shrapnel that comes out. So his hypothesis was that as he heated up the air inside this sealed bottle, the bottle itself would expand, increasing the volume, and as a result, the density would go down. And because he felt that the density was what controlled the weight, the weight itself would go down. And given his rather limited understanding, this isn't really a bad hypothesis. And of course, in Newtonian physics, the reason objects fall to the ground on Earth is because there is a downward vector of gravity. So even though his premise was completely wrong, I'm still tracking with him because what he is trying to do here is change the density of the bottle. Okay, the way that he did that was he heated up the air inside a sealed bottle, causing it to expand against the thin walls of the bottle. Now, initially, the density of the air in the bottle and the density of air in the atmosphere around it was the same. As he heated the bottle up, that increased the pressure in the bottle and expanded the volume of the bottle. And as a result, even though it was a higher pressure because of the added heat, it actually had less density because it was hot air versus cool air. And as a result of this, you're displacing normal density air with low density air. And under the force of buoyancy, it's the negative of the downward acceleration of gravity, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the difference in the density between the air inside the bottle over the air outside the bottle times the volume of the bottle. Much as a balloon full of hot air will weigh less than a balloon full of the same volume of cold air. So basically this experiment is demonstrating two things. One, you are increasing the volume of the bottle, thus increasing the amount of air that is being displaced by the bottle. Plus, you are reducing the density of the air in the bottle without changing the mass of the air in the bottle. The net result of both of those things is to have an increase in the buoyant force, so the object will appear to weigh a little bit less. Now this works with objects that expand readily like air. It does not work with objects that do not expand readily like a steel reference mass, which is what Critical Think was using. Now there's one other thing that I want to bring to everybody's attention, and that is right here. 
you notice on the scale, it is written directly on the scale that D equals 0 0.1 grams. D is the smallest increment that the scale can measure. And in the case of this paint mixing scale, that value is listed as one-tenth of a gram. However, there's another number right there that we need to look at. And that is this number right here. This is E. This is the smallest unit of weight that the scale is certified to accurately measure. And as you can very clearly see, it is a one gram scale. What that means is that the only certified accuracy of this scale is down to the level of the gram. It is not certified to accurately measure down to a tenth of a gram. So if you have something that is 0.5 grams, you should read that as one gram because that is the accuracy limit of the scale. If it's less than 0.5 grams, you should read it as zero grams. So I'm gonna give Flatsoid an A for effort uh, in trying to do this. Um, I'm going to give him an F for not understanding the limitations of his equipment or using the correct equipment. But he gave it a good try, and as we used to say down south, bless his heart. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. I'll see you again soon.